It's trade week. It's the most exciting time of the year if you're a sports journalist because you can't get it wrong. You can just make up wherever. <laughs> Rumours go nuts everywhere. And there's always a history of the great trades. But where there is a great trade, there is also a rubbish trade. Some, uh, most trade, like there's a good side and a bad side to every trade. So these are the best and worst five trades of all time. There's only five. Like it's best for one side and bad for the other one. And I'm talking to Dave Slutskin from draftguru.com.au, a great website where you can follow all of the trades in history to prove to your idiot friend who won certain trades. It's very complicated, but you're a, <laughs> you're a footy nerd. You're watching my channel. You understand what I'm saying. Uh, Dave, What you're a St Kilda fan, so you've had some great trades in the past. I, we have we have been part of some great trades. That's right, Danny. Yeah. You, it takes two to tango. Yes. You can't have a great trade without poor list management on the other side. <laughs> Well, okay, let's get into it. What are the five best and worst trades of all time? Number five. Number five is a guy that Collingwood traded out, a guy called Andrew Shawball. Shawball, okay. Who went to uh, went to Sydney. He was all right for Collingwood. He played, played a good few games. He played 79 odd games, and yeah. they traded him to Sydney in 2000. He was a nuggety fullback type. Was okay. he a nuggety fullback? I'm pretty sure he was. Well, I'm afraid I don't remember him. I'm sorry, Shawble, if you're watching this. This was the late 90s, early 2000s. Yep. So who knows? The game was very different then. Fullbacks used to defend. <laughs> he was traded for Mark Kinnear. So he ended up playing 88 games for for the Swans after okay. he got traded. That's all right, I guess. He was traded for Mark Kinnear and the pick, the pick number 34, which Collingwood got Leon Davis for. And Leon Davis turned out oh. in the end. To be a cult hero and a very good player for yeah. Collingwood. He ended up being All-Australian a couple of times. Yep. Never quite won that flag. It's, it's his misfortune that he was at the club the same time as Nathan Buckley because that meant he was never going to win a flag. <laughs> but he was, a, he was a very good player. Around a long time, one of the best small forwards in the competition for many years. Yeah. And didn't really, Andrew Shawwell didn't really stack up in that context. How did so, he go at Sydney? He, he played 88 games. Okay. He did all right. You know, he, he had a couple of seasons where he, he played a, a reasonable number of games, played 20-odd, but realistically, he wasn't quite the guy and retired at the age of 28. Um, they also, Collingwood also got a guy called Mark Kinnear in the same trade, but uh, Mark Kinnear played zero games for Collingwood. Okay. So we can probably discount him as part of the trade. Yeah. But Leon Davis came out very well out of that one. So I reckon Collingwood might have won that one. Wow. Starting with a Collingwood, pro Collingwood one. <laughs> This is going to be a painful list. It is. Number four. So this is a guy whose brother was also a pretty good AFL footballer. Uh, he played for West Coast. West Coast come up a lot in these lists. They do. They really know their list management well. They've done some... So did they win work. this trade or lose this trade? They won this trade. Okay. Uh, against a team who hasn't historically done necessarily amazing list management, who also happens to be based in the same state. Oh, they did it to Frio. Did it to the rivals. I like this. Yeah, and this was a tough time because this was when Frio first came into the competition in yep. 96, and they got a few Western Australian players zoned to them, which was very lucky for Frio. Um, they didn't necessarily make the most of that. So they managed to get Philip Matera zoned to them. He was a waffle player at the time, playing for South Frio. So he was doing pretty well in the waffle, yeah. I understand. Um, they decided, well, we don't really need Phil Matera. He's a little guy. 171 centimetres, right? Same height as me, which is not AFL footballer height. Um, even though his brother had been a superstar. Yes. Uh, so Frio ended up trading him to West Coast in exchange for a guy called David Hines. Okay. David Hines, a much taller man, so clearly was going to be a better footballer. He'd won a flag at West Coast. He'd played 73 games for West Coast. He ended up playing 13 games for Fremantle. Oh. Uh, and how many games did Philip play at West Coast? Uh, more than 13. <laughs> Played 179 games, kicked wow. 389 goals. He was all Australian, and was a, I think fair to say a bit of a, a stalwart of West Coast Eagles team for a lot of years. Admittedly, not their most successful years necessarily. He never won a flag. He was he was gone by the time that happened. But uh, Phil Matera versus David Hines, I'm fairly certain that uh, that Frio lost that trade. Yeah. And it, they also just to throw in, they also gave up pick three. Oh. In the draft. And who, who was pick three? Brendan Fuster. Oh, okay. Who, yeah, didn't go into much and came back to Frio and didn't do much there either. But, okay, you know, well, don't worry about pick that. Pick three is still a pretty good pick. Yeah. 
and they might have got their eyes a bit uh, a bit bigger than their mouth there. They didn't quite nail that one. So Phil Matera, congratulations, West Coast. Number three best worst trade in uh, AFL draft history. This is a well known one. And I hate to say, but we're going to talk about West Coast again. They keep okay. coming up. Yeah. I wonder if that means. I mean, admittedly, the last five years wouldn't necessarily say this, but I wonder if that means they've been the best list managers ever. Good question. Well, they've and got they Harley Reid now, so yeah, I'd say they've they managed probably to pick up are. Harley Reid. Yep. Uh, so this guy that they traded was a guy who they'd originally taken with pick three in the draft. Okay. He then won a Brownlow and been All Australian a couple of times and won a flag with them. So I think it's fair to say that they got a fair bit out of this guy. His name's Chris Jarter. I've heard of him. Yes. Some might have heard of. Yep. Uh, he could play a bit of football. They traded him to Carlton because, actually, I don't remember at the time. What was the deal? He wanted to go to Victoria. He wanted to go home. WA, I think was go. having issues with the, although they are great list managers, uh, culture managers was not their strong suit at that point, West Coast Eagles. So Judd wanted to go back to Melbourne. Yes. Right. And that was the time. So he said, let me go to Melbourne. And Carlton said, we want him. And West Coast <laughs> held out for a pretty solid deal in the end. West Coast ended up getting from that trade pick three, pick 20, and a guy called Josh Kennedy. Yes. Uh, the pick 20 was Tony Noddy. He only played a couple of games. Okay. So, okay, fine. So that pick three, they took Chris Maston. Who, oh, yeah. Pretty good. Admittedly, Chris Maston never an absolute superstar of the game, but, but they got a couple solid. hundred games out yeah, of him. Yeah, pretty solid player. <laughs> and he won a flag for them. Yeah. So Chris Maston, decent. And Josh Kennedy... Uh, uh, those who are of an age will remember there were actually two Josh Kennedys around for a yes. long time, which was very confusing. Both very big units, both ab- could absolutely both tear a game both apart. Both could play football. Yes. This was the key forward, Josh Kennedy. Okay. Full forward. Bearded. Uh, kicked Josh a Kennedy. few goals, kicked 723 goals across 293 games, 271 of those for West Coast. Uh, but Chris Judd didn't do badly. Yeah, this is, this is a weird one where I wouldn't say Carlton did a rubbish trade here at all. Bringing Chris Judd in, he won two Brownlows, uh, led that club during a very dark period. Yep. Uh, where he I, was all Australian a few times. You know, he, he, he created a culture around Yes. Uh, but you would say but, West Coast won that. And ultimately, Carlton didn't win a flag with Judd. And mm-hmm. for what they paid, maybe they would have wanted to. He was gone by the end of 2015. Mm. Whereas Kennedy kept going until only a couple of years ago, retired in 2022. He still kicked 37 goals a year, retired. Uh, he won a flag. He was All-Australian a few times, won a couple of Coleman medals. He was a pretty handy guy to have around. Now, admittedly, so you often see this in trades, there's a bit of a time shift here. You know, yeah. Kennedy, when he goes over to West Coast, is only 20 years old, and Judd at the time is already 24. So Carlton are maybe a bit more short-term and West Coast a bit more long-term maybe, but... I don't know. I find it Stop hard to Stop trying argue. to justify Carlton. <laughs> yeah, I find it hard to argue that West Coast didn't win that one significantly. They yeah. held out for a really good deal. They got Maston and Josh Kennedy out of it. Yes, Carlton got Judd and made something out of that, but fundamentally, West Coast, congratulations. You win again. And the second best uh, and worst trade uh, in the history of uh, Trade Week. Uh, we just had Chris Judd. This is another high-profile one. Very high profile one. Um, this was a guy who was traded from North Melbourne mm-hmm. to Adelaide. At the time he was traded, he'd already played 244 games for North Melbourne and kicked almost 700 goals. He had a pretty solid career up to that point. With a minor blemish. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. fair to say. Um, admittedly, he'd been all Australian seven times and he'd won their best and fairest a few times, four times, and won them a couple of flags. Um, he also had an off-field indiscretion. His name was Wayne Carey. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first of many off-field The first of many off-field indiscretions. He did, yeah, well, that's right. He'd had multiple at the time. Yeah. But one which meant that he could no longer continue at North Melbourne. And we don't need to rehash exactly no, what no, happened no, there. It's well for. documented. Yep. Um, the point, though, is that he said, I want a fresh start elsewhere. He's originally from Adelaide. So Adelaide said, yeah, we'll have Isn't a from New South Wales? Well, he, he played footy in Adelaide. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. But you're yep. right, yeah, from New South Wales originally. But he played footy at North Adelaide before joining North when he was much, much younger. Okay. Um, he went to Adelaide. Adelaide coughed up and paid really through the nose yeah. for Wayne Carey, given that the guy was 31 by the time he got there. By the time he walked in the door, he was already 31 years old. Uh, they got 28 games out of him. What did they give up? And they paid pick two. And Oof. pick 18 in the draft. So two first round picks. Yeah. 
for a guy who's already 31 years old and admittedly one of the better footballers to ever play of course, the game. absolutely. Top three, two, five, you know. But to how many games did you play for him? But he ended up playing 28 games. I mean, and how many more were you actually going to get out of a 31-year-old? Yeah. Even if he'd been able to play three or four seasons. And he'd had a, couple, he'd had a year off. He'd due had to a year off. He barely and played and footy in the yeah. last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, in exchange, North got pick two and pick 18, which sound like pretty good picks. And one of them turned out to be pick 18 was Chris Shaw. Chris Shaw didn't end up making it. But pick two, they got a guy called Daniel Wells. Daniel oh, yeah. Wells, oh, yeah. who was a very good player in his day. He yes. wasn't quite the absolute top echelon, but he was pretty handy. He no, played 243 games in yeah, the very before solid. spending a couple of years at Collingwood. He won their best and fairest a couple of times. He was in the All-Australian squad. Really good player. And giving up to two of these really good picks, including the second best pick in the draft for Wayne Carey at 31 years old. Yeah, I don't know if that one really was ever going to work yeah. out for you, Adelaide. Sorry. So well done, North. All right, Dave, from draftguru.com.au. What is the best slash worst trade in the history? Do we have to do this one? Is it? Oh, yeah. I mean, we do we do have to? We I'm, have a Saint, to. I'm a Saints fan. We've been on the wrong end of some trades over the years. Yeah. And the right end. This wasn't your fault. Plugger didn't want to stay. So those who might be slightly younger might not have heard of a guy called Plugger. His name was Tony Lockett. Nickname was Plugger. He, highest uh, goal kicker of all time. Highest goal kicker of all time. He kicked 1,360 goals in his career, including yep. his uh, short-lived unretirement where he lasted only three games at Sydney. Oh, wow. You had forgotten that one. His best season at the Saints, he kicked 127 goals in 17 games. Oh, 93? It was in 91. 91. And you know why he missed those games? He missed like the first six games or something? He missed a few because he belted someone and got suspended, which was a relatively common story with Plugger. <laughs> um, he could play footy. Mm. And I remember watching him as a kid. I'm just going to memory lane just for... Just for Go for just, it. Just, yes. Because I'm, I'm getting my uh, therapy here. Absolutely. everyone else. Uh, he was pretty fun to watch. He was great. He was a classic Even as a Tism song, which talks about Wimata Lockett, this Tism song called Father and Son. Mm-hmm. And Tism are back, by the way, if anyone's going to see them. <laughs> I certainly am in a few weeks. Uh, he won a Brownlow medal as a key forward, unheard of. Yes. Before or since. Ridiculous. Be uh, he won the Coleman medal a couple of times. He was kicking 100 goals regularly. He would have won it like his entire career, but he was up against Ablett and Dunstall. Yep. And... Yep. Couldn't always stay on the park. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Those guys were, were when they were they were off the park. They were injured. Uh, Plugger was because he he murdered someone. He probably belted someone as yep. he did, or thrown a crutch as he uh, very memorably did. Threw a crutch at a very young Eddie Maguire, a sports reporter <laughs> outside the hospital uh, in the very early nineties. So, Who, so what did the Saints get for? Because he want, he wanted to in leave. In ninety four, he wanted out, and the yep. Swans had tapped him up and said, "Can we come?" We got a King's Ransom in exchange, okay. everything, including the kitchen sink. His name is Josh Kitchen. Um, oh, right. We got three players and three picks. Uh, Joshua Kitchen, Glenn Nugent, and Robbie Neal. None of them did anything. Okay. Really. Actually, I had a soft spot for Glenn Nugent at the time. He was a, he was a good player to watch. Um, but we ended up getting pick five, pick 13, and pick 48. With pick five, we got a guy called Joel Smith, who unfortunately broke his leg at the wrong time, and then we ended up delisting him a year later, and he went on to be an All-Australian for Hawthorne. Very good player, though. And we got Ozzy Jones. I'm trying to talk this up to Ozzy Jones was good for me. Ozzy Jones, Jones was a great, great player. player. Great player. Played 226 games yep. for the Saints, and he was all Australian a couple of times. He had two good eras. He was good in '97 when we made the grand final. He yes. was good in 2004 when we should have made the grand final. Yep, agreed. Uh, Sydney though ended up getting a guy called Tony Lockett. He mm-hmm. only played 98 games for them. In those 98 games, he kicked about 430 goals. Took him to the grand final. Four plus goals a game, yeah. again, unheard of now or since. He took them to the grand final for the first time in many years for the Swannies. Couldn't take them to a flag, Middle that was pretty tough. He was All-Australian three times, he won the best and first, he won their Coleman a couple of times. Look, it had to happen. And I wanted the Saints to come out of this better. And look, I don't think we did too badly, you given tried. that he was leaving. You and tried. we did get a, some stuff, and yep. you know, draft picks weren't what they were, once were. But uh, it was pretty tough. You know the other guy, though, who was involved in this trade, 
who Sydney gave up at the time, well, they didn't need him anymore because they were bringing in a full forward. All oh, right. So they had a guy called Simon Minton Connell. Yes, on their list, great player. Who you might remember. Carlton, Hawthorne, Bulldogs, Swans. That's right. Who, admittedly, was a very good full forward in and of himself. He yep. played 100 odd games, kicked 300 goals, but he bounced from club to club a little bit. Yeah. So um, the Hawks ended up with him for a couple of years and then he went on to went on to the Dogs after. He sort of got involved. It was one of those, one of the first of these multi party trades where right. at the end of the day, everyone sits down and tries to work out if they won or lost because they're very confused. Picks are going here and players are going there and no one quite... That's why we're doing this list. But ultimately, I reckon Sydney were very, very happy with the outcome of this. They ended up with Tony Lockett. He was a figurehead for that team. He Branding, he was everything. He, was, he wasn't Warwick Kappa, but uh, he was better than Warwick Kappa. <laughs> he was. And less troublesome at the time, at being a bit more mature than he once had been. And the Saints were unfortunately the losers. And that is the Draft Guru's list. Uh, what do you reckon? Is there a worse trade? Is there a better trade? Uh, let us know in the comments. Check out draftguru.com.au. It's genuinely one of the best websites uh, for AFL stats nerds uh, going around. And if you've heard of a rumour for this trade week, Bailey Smith to Gold Coast in exchange for the roller coaster from Dreamworld being set up at Witten Oval. That's what I've heard. I heard the Saints are picking up Nick Dacos. <laughs> in exchange for a potato cake. <laughs> in, in fact, we have to give up all of our players. <laughs> 47 players are going to Collingwood and we yep. get Nick Dacos. Let us know your, your, your rumour and then you can say, yeah, I read it online. It's believable. Uh, draftguru.com.au. Thanks for watching.